Dear Jesus, I thank you for, man, every single teenager here tonight, God. I thank you for every middle schooler, every high schooler, and I just pray that, man, tonight's going to be a fun night full of new friendships and new discoveries, God, and just, uh, uh, most importantly, just discovering who you are or maybe rediscovering who you are. So we love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Awesome. But man, uh, just so you know me, my name is Theo Davis, and I help to oversee our student ministries here. And it is such a joy doing what I do and getting to talk to you guys on a daily basis. And um, let me introduce you to my family. So up here is my family, uh, my wife and my little daughter, Zelda. Um, that's her smiling, you know. She, I, we said, say cheese, and that's her smiling. And uh, me and my family, we love art. We really, really love art. We love anything artsy. We love anything artistic. And for me, uh, art just kind of runs through my veins. And uh, my wife is very artistic herself. For example, like she's a painter. She's a really great painter. I think I have some paintings here. So this is above our TV of just some musical notes that she did, some accent pieces, which is really cool in our home. She's also very artistic with her hands. And she makes and crafts these things out of clay and then bakes them and then like actually like gives them away and sells them to people. Like here are some of the things. This is a key that she made. Like she made that out of clay and then painted it. And then here's a teapot that she made, which is pretty cool. Like that was a wedding gift for somebody. So, like, art just kind of runs in our family. We just really love creative things. We love artistic things. And for me, myself, I... Ooh, hello. Oh, I'll, I'm going to do a beatbox later. So, uh, for me, myself, like, I love, I love art. So, I love musical things. I love playing the guitar. I love playing piano. Um, my fa one of my favorite things is drawing. Uh, any drawers here? Anybody like to draw? Excellent, yeah. <laughs> So uh, here's one of my drawings that I did recently of Batman. You know, I like to do a little inking and things of that nature, so that's pretty cool. But uh, man, art. Art is so cool. Art is a wonderful way of communicating, regardless if you consider yourself artistic, right? Art is a great way of communicating, and we all have an appreciation for art, even if you don't consider yourself artistic. I can prove it here. So if you enjoy the worlds of Call of Duty or Minecraft or Skyrim or Mass Effect, you appreciate art, right? Because if you were to take away all those graphics, it would just be a bunch of zeros and ones, and it would not be that enjoyable, right? Where are my sports fans at? Any sports fans in here? Who saw that Wizards-Bulls game last night, man? Like, whoo, come on. I was like on the edge of my seat for that. But you know what? Even in the realm of sports, we have an appreciation for art. Every single team has their logo, right? And we sport that logo with pride. You ever go to a football game and you see the really big guys with like their bellies hanging out and they got their, you know, the Redskins logo on their belly and they're making it dance and it's so cool, man. Like, even in the realm of sports, we have an appreciation for art. If you love music, you love listening to who knows what, whether it's the beat, whether it's the lyrics, Art communicates something. Art is sort of this common ground that we can all sort of uh, communicate on and just appreciate. Art just has a way of transcend transcending normal words and can communicate something that otherwise could not be communicated, or at least do it in a really cool way, right? Take, take this canvas, for example. Now, for the purpose of tonight, I want you to think of this canvas as your life and my life. Because have you ever heard the expression like, oh, they're, they're a blank canvas? Have you ever heard that before? Okay, so when, people, when, when babies are born, a lot of times people say, oh, they're a blank canvas. They're, they're perfectly, you know, nothing's on them. A masterpiece is ready to be written on that canvas. And so we think to ourselves, man, yeah, like when we first come into this world, it's completely blank. There's absolutely everything. Possibilities are endless of what we want to do. But the reality is that... Uh, our canvas is actually not all that blank. When you and I come into the world, our canvas already has a tint of color on it. And that color comes from uh, just a variety of things. One thing is our parents and our ancestors. Uh, based on the decisions they've made, the mistakes they've made, it already has an impact on your life based on... Let me get a little more paint on there. It already has an impact on your life based on the decisions that they've made. So whether or not your parents are together, whether or not they uh, love each other or don't love each other, whether they eventually get a divorce or not, um, all of these things have a, a pretty serious impact 
on our canvas. They, they impact our lives, right? Like what our parents do has an impact on what our painting ends up looking like. So let me just spread this around here real quick. Uh, man, my hands are going to get nice and messy for this. I love it. Come on. So I'm just going to be like discarding tons of stuff here. Sweet. Oh, I'm going to... Yes. Okay. So, so there's that. But beyond that, so our canvas already has a little bit of color on it, like as soon as we come into the world, right, based on what our ancestors do. Uh, our canvas also has a border around it. Now, let me see. Is this orange? Yeah, there we go. So our canvas has a little bit of a border. It has a, what I would call a frame. Uh, and this frame is just based on where you're born, right? Like some of us are, were born here. And who was born in Shady Grove Hospital? I'm, I'm just a little curious. Yeah, Shady Grove. Woo! I was not born there, but Zelda was, my little daughter. That's pretty cool. So, but based on, based on where you were born, based on your family background and history, the school you go to, there's a border around your life, right? Regardless of, and I'm getting a little hung up here on some of the paint, but regardless of where you live, there's a border around every single one of our lives. So here we are with this painting, right? And there's paint already on each and every one of our canvases of our lives. This is our life, remember? And so even when we come into this world, there is a canvas. And let me get your attention here real quick, real quick, real quick. Um, every single one of us starts out, and there's already paint on our canvas. But we think to ourselves, you know what? That's not, a, that's not that bad. Like, we can work with this, right? I can work with a little bit of color. I'll make a masterpiece out of what? Is that beige and orange? Yeah, we can do something with that. So I remember when I was a kid... And let me see, where do I want to start? Right about here. I remember when I was a kid, I loved being a kid. Who in here loved being a kid? Man, being a kid, still am? Who said still am? That's awesome. Being a kid was so much fun. And I just remember being out. I'm going to draw myself here. This is me. Oh, man. <laughs> So I just remember uh, just loving life as a kid. I grew up in uh, Wheaton Regional, the Wheaton Regional area, right down the street from Wheaton Regional Park, actually. And I remember the sun was always out. I love the summertime because we would go down to Wheaton Regional Park and we would get on that train. Has anyone ridden the train in Wheaton? Anybody in here? Let me sh we have a picture of me as a, I think I was about five, no, that's four years old. Now... I can't pull those, those shorts off now, but, uh, but I pulled them off pretty well back then, man. And I just loved life. Life was really cool. The sun was always shining, and I just really enjoyed what life had to offer. Man, I love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I love Power Rangers. Like, life as a kid was just good, right? Any Power Ranger fans, or is that, like, way after you? I know they've had, like, 20 seasons. That's cool. So... So life starts out pretty cool, right? It's good, everything's good and great, and we enjoy life, the sun is shining. But something happens. Something happens somewhere along the way. And it happens maybe when you're three, maybe when you're four, maybe when you're five years old, but you notice it and it leaves a mark on you. And for me, it was the first time when someone falsely accused me of taking cookies from the cookie jar, right? And I was like, Mom, no, it wasn't me. It was my sister. It was Christina. And she didn't believe me. And so I was punished for something that someone else did. And I realized that there's something wrong with the world. And what that did to me is it left a little scar on my painting, left a little scar on my life as I realized that, man, there is injustice in the world. And as you and I grow up and we grow up throughout life, we keep encountering these scars on our life. Maybe it is from a time when someone stands you up. They say they're going to meet you somewhere, but they don't show up. And bam, another little bloody scar appears on the painting of our life. Maybe it's from a time where uh, you like somebody, right? And they said they liked you back, but, but then turns out they didn't. And they made up this whole thing, and they're actually dating somebody else. Scar, right? <laughs> right? Who can relate? That was... Who, <laughs> There's, but as we go through life, and this is our painting, right? This is supposed to be the masterpiece of our life. 
as we come into this world, this is supposed to be a masterpiece, but as we keep going throughout life, something happens. We, we have self-image issues, and we have another scar. Someone tells us that we're not good enough, another scar on our painting. Someone tells us, or, or we actually ourselves decide, you know what, I know what the right thing to do is, but I'm going to lie in that situation, another scar on our painting. And as we go through life, and I think we can all relate, these things happen, both we make mistakes and other people make mistakes that affect us. And all of these mistakes just leave these scars all over our painting. And the more that this happens, once you get into middle school, high school, the more that you start to think to yourself, you know what, what's the point? Why should I even bother trying to create a masterpiece on this? It's already scarred. It's already so messed up. And what happens, and what happened to me, quite frankly, is you start to sink a little bit into a depression. You start, these dark clouds kind of start forming on the painting of your life. And, you, and I bet there's some people in here that feel like, man, I've had, some, I've had some of those experiences where I feel like just dark clouds just follow me anywhere and everywhere, and they start to rise up from the bottoms of our paintings and then before long, this happy little guy here, where the world seemed like, man, this is so good, so nice, he's etched out, or she's etch etched out, and then all that's left is you on your face in the middle of this painting, just sort of depressed and confused. And so maybe that's where some of you guys feel like you're at tonight. Maybe as you come in here tonight, you kind of feel like, man, I, my, my painting's messed up. I've made so many mistakes. People make mistakes toward me, and I don't know what to do. And I don't even feel like I should bother trying because I can't make a masterpiece out of this. I can't do anything tangible with this. But I want to tell you here tonight that if that's how you feel, there's good news for you, man, because I serve a God who is able to take the most messed up things in our lives and turn them into something good. Uh, there's uh, Jesus, who, came, who we believe, man, is God, who came down on this planet to die for our sins. He said this in John chapter 16. He said, I have told you all of this so that you may have peace in me. Here on this earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. You see, Jesus is able to do something remarkable. Jesus is able to take our messed up and ruined canvas and turn it into something that we can actually use down the road. See, instead of focusing on the center of the canvas, instead of focusing on ourselves and how, man, life is all bad, if we turn our attention and we turn our eyes to the side and we turn our eyes to what Jesus did on the cross... Then instead of us just being down and depressed, no, we're turning our attention to the cross. We're bowing down to what God did for us, for you and for me. And the scars on this canvas can be redeemed. Now, a lot of you are thinking here right now, okay, Theo, that's really nice, but honestly, just by drawing a little cross right there, you aren't, you're not really redeeming this painting. You, like, it still looks a hot mess, right? Um, but here's the cool thing, and here's what I love about art and our God. Our God is very creative. Our God is very artistic. And God, what God can do with this painting, he can do the same thing with your life. Because I believe we serve a God who is able, so incredibly able, you guys, to take a canvas that is messed up and scarred and beyond repair. He's able to take your life, which might be messed up, scarred, and beyond repair, and actually turn it into something beautiful.
I serve a God who is able to take the scarred paintings of our lives and turn them into something beautiful, turn them into something that he can use, something that is worthy of display. I was a student, I was a teenager, a middle schooler who had a scarred and mired painting. I was a teenager, a student who, man, when, you, when I looked at the canvas of my life, I thought to myself, I am beyond repair. My parents have split up while I was told when I was in the fifth grade being diagnosed with dyslexia that you'll probably never go on to do anything more than be a janitor. You'll probably never learn to read and write, so probably don't aim too high. Scars all over my painting, sister with bipolar disorder, caused such chaos in our family. And I was hurting and hurting, and I wonder why, God, why would you allow this to happen in my life? And I don't know each and every one of you here tonight, but I bet that you feel like there's some scars on your painting. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus can take the scarred canvas of your life and turn it into something beautiful, turn it into something that he can use. Remember... Jesus himself said, and you can, uh, you can kill the music now. Jesus himself said, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Even as you go through these fears, he can take the scars of your painting. I love how the book of Isaiah describes it. Even before Jesus came onto the screen, the prophet said this, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, sh stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And the punishment that, uh, that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. You guys, Jesus has created you with purpose. He is the almighty, masterful God. You are not the result of just passion or mistake. You are a masterpiece in God's eyes. If you don't believe me, check out this scripture from the Bible. It says, for we are God's masterpiece. Created, he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do good things he planned for us long ago. Did you know that God, whether you're in middle school or high school, God has a plan for you. He can take that canvas of your life and do something with it. I love the way the voice says it. It's, uh, the voice translation says it. For we are the product of his hands. Heaven's poetry etched on our lives. Created in the anointed Jesus to accomplish good works that God arranged long ago. You here tonight are God's masterpiece. But the only way that he can transform the canvas of our lives is by just accepting that gift, accepting the fact that he died on the cross for your sins and my sins, that you don't have to carry around the burden of, I did that wrong and I've done that wrong, I messed up in that area and I, I displeased people in that area. It doesn't matter. Jesus says, look, I can give you grace. I could wash it all away. People, when they look at the canvas of your life, they'll no longer see you. They'll no longer see the scars of your life, but instead they'll see me. They'll see Almighty God. They'll see Jesus living in you. The last scripture I want to share with you tonight, uh, of the writer of the Bible, and uh, Paul, the, the guy named Paul said this in Galatians. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. You guys. The cool thing happens when you start following Jesus. When you, when you realize that, man, I am a sinful person, I make mistakes, I can't do this on my own. And when you just make that decision that, okay, Lord, I'm done trying to do it on my own. I'm done wallowing in my own guilt and my shame and my sin. And Jesus, I'm going to start, mm, excuse me, wow, that really kills the momentum. But Jesus, I'm going to start following you, right? And I'm going to have fun along the way because, look at, man, I have a lot of fun and I'm following Jesus. We, a lot of our students here, it's so much fun following Jesus. It, it's a little hard at times. It's a little challenging at times. But, man, it is so worth it because now no longer do people see the scars on your life. No longer when you're at home at night and you're just thinking to yourself all the mistakes you've made and all the things that have happened to you. No, 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 no. Now it's all Jesus that people see. It's all Jesus living through your life. And so, man, if you're a Christian here tonight, I just want to encourage you. I want to remind you, look to Jesus. When you're in your schools, be a reflection of Jesus. When, when you're walking through the hallways and the conversations that you have, let people see Jesus, not you. Let people see Jesus. And if you're here tonight and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, if you never ask for forgiveness of your sins, 
It is the most amazing thing. I did it back when I was in the eighth grade, and I've been walking with Jesus ever since. It's been hard, and I've made mistakes, but you know what? His grace is enough. It can cover it. You don't have to be perfect to come to God. You don't have to have it all together. God can do so many awesome things in your life. So in a moment, I'm going to give you an opportunity if you've never accepted Jesus. If you're ready to say, you know what, I don't want my life to just to be a, a, a scarred canvas. I don't want to just do um, all this messed up stuff that I've been doing. If you want to start following Jesus and have the painting of your life transformed, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that right now. So let's pray.